Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Taco Tuesday. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend. Just want to let you guys know from the get-go, this is, if you're watching this, it means that I'm somewhere else in the world. This is a pre-recorded message. If you're watching this, um, I guess that could be the next question for the bubble talk later on of where in the world is Sky, right? And you got <laughs> and we'll give you a free bubble tea for that one. But just want to welcome everyone to another Taco Tuesday. I hope that everyone had a wonderful weekend. What are you guys drinking today? Today, I am drinking a nice latte. Uh, it's just a hot latte, and this is from, uh, from a Korean coffee shop called Coffea. I'm not sure what you guys are drinking. Some of you might be having water with lemon juice or lemons, whatever. Some of you might be having water itself, or maybe even a Sprite. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to have a good time today talking about the story of Hosea, okay? The prophet Hosea, and today's title is called Too Extreme. Okay, and of course, same as usual, don't worry about this, even though it's pre-recorded, I'm going to ask you to keep writing your questions down. Throughout the talk, if you get inspired, write the questions down. We have people here who are still here live who will take those questions, and I'm going to make a separate video for those questions. So keep asking those questions, and we'll probably get a video out for those questions in the same week. Uh, of this video also, all right? So everyone, sit back, relax, and we're gonna begin today's Taco Tuesday. All right, so let's go to the story of Hosea. Now, who is this guy? Now, this guy is one of the minor prophets in the Bible, okay? Minor prophet doesn't mean he sings in a minor, and it doesn't mean that he's very small. It actually just means that the size of his book is small. That's all it is, right? So, Hosea is his prophet, and if you look at other prophets, right, like you look at a Moses and, you know, his job is to take people out of the land, you know, out of slavery. He takes like hundreds of thousands of people out. You have other prophets who saw visions and dreams, and, oh, you had like Joshua. His, his job was to battle and fight against the enemies. Um, Hosea's story, uh, what he was supposed to do, it wasn't that great, actually. Uh, God told him to marry a prostitute. Yeah, that, that was his uh, mission in life, was to marry a prostitute. And this, this, and this is how crazy it gets. Like, can you imagine it first? Like, you're the man of God, right? The man of God. And you're like, oh, yeah, by the way, go over to, the, like, the worst area of town and go get that, that woman as your wife. And, you know, can you imagine, like, oh, well, God, what? But everyone knows I'm a prophet. Like, you want me to marry a prostitute? He's like, yeah, go marry the prostitute. And not only does he marry the prostitute, he has three children. And get this, these are the names of his children. Like, you know, in, in, uh, back in those days, every name had a meaning. The first child, guess what the name was? Judgment is coming. That's the name of the first child. Second child's name, guess what? The name is No Mercy. Right? The third name of the child is not my people. Like, you're not my people. So, you know, when we talk about too extreme in today's title, we're talking about very extreme. Number one, the prophet, the man of God, has to marry a prostitute. Number two, he's naming his children under, like, it's like God's feelings. It's, you know, it's kind of like that feeling when, um, when, like, you're so mad that you're just like, yeah, what, do you, what should I do? Oh, just do anything you want. I don't care. But God's like, yeah, name judgment is coming. And you're like, what? You want to name my kid judgment is coming? Right? Can you imagine that whenever your child comes down, it's the prophet's child, ah, judgment is coming, and everyone's going to run away because that's the name of your child. Right? Now, on top of this, remember, she's a prostitute. So the wife is a prostitute, and there were times where she went back to prostitution while she's married to the prophet of God. Like, she's not even scared about being judged herself, right? She's married to the prophet of God. She goes back to prostitution. You know what God says? Oh, go buy her back. Like, what? What do you mean? It's like, he had to go take, like, grains and, and other things and buy his wife back. That's what he had to do. And this didn't just happen once, this happened several times. And interestingly enough, in this short book, is about his life where God tells him to marry a prostitute, name his children, and buy his wife back. And the whole moral of the story in this one is, is basically showing that God's saying that, well, this is what my life is like, right? I love my people, and the people are like this prostitute that don't love me back, and you have to, I have to keep buying you back. 
right? And, you know, it's a very interesting story, but the thing is, the question we can get from this, it's such a short story, but the question is like, what can we learn from such a crazy story? Honestly, it's a crazy story, right? What can we learn? Does it mean that I should go out and marry a prostitute? No, it doesn't mean that, right? Does it mean that I should do something that extreme? No, it doesn't mean that at all, right? Should I go and marry a prostitute or marry someone that doesn't love me? No, God is not telling people to do this, right? So the thing I want to talk about on three major points to now and talk about of what can we learn from today's message? It's really, really important that this story, uh, that this story that we hear, it seems extreme, uh, but there's three really important things I want everyone to learn today, right? Number one is, you have to be able to see a message in life that helps us in other areas. Now, what the heck does that mean, right? What does it mean to see a message in life? All throughout life, we have lots of different experiences, right? And through these experiences, we, we should be realizing something that helps us in other areas of our life. Just like the story, if you look in Hosea chapter 3, verse 1. What does it say? Why is God telling Hosea to marry a prostitute, right? And it says here, it says, God, God says to Hosea, go show your love to your wife again, though she's loved by another man as an adulterer. And she's an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes, right? Now, what is God teaching through Hosea? God is teaching Hosea through his experience what God's heart is like, right? So through one experience, you're able to realize another person's experience or another person's feelings also. Let me give an example of something that happened just last week, okay? And one thing that I, I do on this, not on the side, but other things that I do is I also do uh, Bible training. I teach people how to, uh, how to teach the Bible, right? I teach the people who teach how to teach the Bible. Okay, so uh, what I do is every week I give quizzes, right? I make them memorize Bible verses. I make them memorize certain things like good information in the Bible. And I write these quizzes. So lately, like, I'm not going to say this to their face, even though they might see this. It's like, I, I'm tired of making quizzes. So you know what I did? I was like, you know what? The best way to make them memorize even better is for them to make the quiz, right? So now I assign people to make the quiz. And very interestingly, one of the realizations people had from making the quiz was... Someone thinks to themselves, like, oh, you know what? Oh, I, I want to make the quiz. Why? Because then I don't have to take it. And it's true. You don't have to take the quiz. However, the realization they had from that was, wow, it's actually harder and takes more time to make the quiz than to take the quiz, right? And what was their realization? Of course, you can realize at my level, like, oh, wow. Pastor Sky, you know, works so hard to make the quiz, but they actually realize to a higher level is, wow, how much is God doing for us just for us to receive these simple things? For us, it's so easy, but for God, it must have been so much harder, just like it was much harder to make the test, right? In the same way too, uh, a lot of times in life, you guys are going to go through experiences and these experiences are important for you. Why? Because you don't just leave them as an experience. You have to realize from the experience and then you can understand other aspects of life. Just like taking a test or making a test, you'll realize new things. The second thing I want to talk to you today is what? Now, this is going to be a, a two parts, two parts to this. And this one is talking about the sacrifice of love. Okay. Now you're like, what does that mean? The sacrifice of love. Now, the thing you have to understand is everything in the world that we see right now, isn't really that fair. It isn't right. There's a lot of things in life. You're like, Oh, why is it like, Oh, life is unfair. Oh, why did they say this? Oh, why did they misunderstand me? Oh, why didn't I get the job? And so many times we look at it and we say it is unfair. And we can, we can literally say that not everything works out in our favor in life. Right. And, and a lot of things were like, Oh, why, why is it like this? And I'm going to talk about the sacrifice of love from this verse in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. And it says, we love because he loved us first. Now, this is talking about we love God because he loved us first. But the, 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 the moral of this is, or the message that has to come out to you guys is, before someone recognizes your love, before someone can love you back, someone has to pour and sacrifice love first, right? It's not like two people look at each other at the exact same moment and say, I love you, let's get married. Like, it doesn't work that way. 
People don't just fall in love at the same time. It's usually someone chases the other and then someone realizes how much this person loves them and then they love them back, right? Love requires love at first. Someone's gonna sacrifice at first to love. And I'm gonna tell you this, the best example of this is children. Children are the best example of parents have to sacrifice love first before they get an equal amount of love back. This is reality, right? Think about this. Do children really love their parents as much as their parents love them? And the answer is no way. Not even close. It's not even close, right? Because put it this way, a parent will die for the child. But will a child die for the parent? And the answer is absolutely not, right? Child, the child is only thinking about themselves. I want, I want. You see, you know, you see them at the supermarket, in the toy stores. These kids are on the ground. Ah, they're like pounding the ground and screaming. And the parents are just kind of looking at them like, oh, what do I do? What am I doing? Kids are always fighting. The parents are protecting. The, par the kids hit the parents. The parents are protecting. It's like it's happening all the time where the parents love more than the children in the beginning, right? And that's the thing we have to understand is, we have to learn from this too, right? When you look at the story of Hosea, he's learned, this is the sacrifice of love. There's something, there's, this love requires someone to sacrifice first. And that's why, what did God say? We, we, we just saw it in Hosea chapter three, verse one. He says, love them. I'm gonna, you have to love this woman, get them back just as much as I love, right? Realizing how much God loves the people. But we have to realize too, is that in order for us to get that real love, yeah, it requires sacrifice in the beginning. Someone has to love more than the other. And this brings, us, brings me to the second part of this sacrifice is love, which is seeing the big picture, right? Because in order for me to sacrifice more, to give sacrifice in the beginning, we really need to see the big picture first. Now, what does that mean? Right, because like I said, the world seems unfair. So, you know, it's kind of like, oh, why would I want to give to this world when the world doesn't give back to me or it's so unfair and oh, I, I can't stand it. Um, there's a verse in Luke chapter six, verse 32. Very interesting verse. It says, uh, this is Jesus speaking. He says, um, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. So now he's like going, oh yeah, guess what? You need to love not just people who like you, or love you, you need to love people that don't even love you. And you're like, what? Like, that's a crazy sacrifice. However, what's the big picture, right? The big picture is something far beyond just me loving my own child or me loving this person that loves me back so I can marry them, right? There's a much bigger picture that we need to see that there is a greater good. There is righteousness, doing what is right, becoming a good person. Right? Or being able to create a world where there's no fighting, where there's peace. Something that's so much bigger than what we see. And we have to realize that sometimes sacrifice is for something that is much, much bigger. Let me, I'm going to give you another example with children, right? Of seeing the bigger picture. When your child grows up, or when we grew up as teenagers, um, didn't we also like talk back to our parents? Didn't we also like try to fight with our parents and argue with our parents? And we're just, you know, we all experience it. Even if you don't have a child, you know that you did it to your parents, right? You did it to your parents. And there comes a point where you, you are like betting your life that you are right, right? And then, of course, later in life, you realize you're wrong. But imagine from the parent's perspective, you're fighting with your child and the parents know they're right. Because they have more experience, they, they know a lot more than the child or the teenager does. And the teenager's kind of going out of feelings, right? So they're fighting and fighting and fighting. And what happens is it gets to a point where if you cross a certain line in a fight with your children, your children will hate you. They won't like you anymore, right? And there's a point where a parent has to decide in their head, what is better? Is it better for me to be right or is it better for me to preserve the relationship? and just say, you're right, I'm wrong. Well, there comes a point where the parent has to realize, if I keep fighting about, even though I'm right, even though I know I have the right answer, but the parent will think to themselves, but if I keep going, then our relationship will be broken. 
And if the relationship is broken, then my son or daughter won't talk to me. And the next time there's a problem, they're going to go off to someone else and not their own parent. And at that point, the parent sees the bigger picture and says, no, the relationship is, is much more important to me. So what does the parent do? Sacrifices being right and says, no, I'm so sorry, honey. You know what? You're right. Okay, go ahead and do this. Why? You have to see the bigger picture, right? And just like what Jesus said too about loving you. And yeah, sometimes you got to see the bigger picture. And if you don't see it, it's very, very hard to, like, to think to yourself, God, isn't that a little bit extreme? You want me to love people that don't love me? No, you have to see the bigger picture, okay? The third point and the last point I want to give you is uh, extreme experience gives extreme experience. You're like, what does that mean, okay? Now, one thing that people always talk about is this. Oh, you know, I want to experience life. I don't feel life. I don't, um, I, I want to fulfill my dreams, big dreams, big visions, big this, big that. And people are like, oh, why doesn't it happen? And the thing you have to understand is in order to feel, like if you want to feel something very strongly, then you have to do it in the extreme way. So what I'm saying is, if you want to have an extreme experience, you need to do something that's extreme. You do, right? That's how you feel something even more. You see, when you look in life, there's like so many success stories, right? Success stories like, what about, what's that guy's name that, um, oh, who was the guy that went hiking and his arm got caught between rocks and he had to take a knife and cut off his own arm? Uh, there's a movie about that. It was called, uh, something like 88 Hours? No. 77 hours, no, I forget what it was called. It's something, it's something like 88 hours. Basically, 127. sorry, 127, 80, it was too small, right? 127? 127 hours, right? He went rock climbing by himself in the wilderness, his arm got caught, and then he, he knew he was gonna die, so he had to cut his own arm off, take his arm with him and go back, right? And when you look at that, you're like, what? And then this guy, is speaking around the world about his experience and everyone's like oh my gosh and he's talking about his learning points what he learned from his experience why do people want to hear that because it's extreme experience gives you extreme experience right i'm not saying to cut off your own arm though by the way right yeah but what happens is when we listen to someone with an extreme experience, we're like, whoa, and we want to listen. We're like, wow, how did you become successful? There are, his, his name is Aaron Ralston. There you go, Aaron Ralston. And you guys can search him up on the internet. Is a movie called 127 Years, uh, no, not 127 Years, 127 Hours, right? Take a look at this, it's extreme. But what happens is when someone has an extreme experience, we look at that story, that extreme story, number one is we respect and are fascinated by that story. Because we imagine, wow, what was it like? What did you go through? The second thing is we recognize how amazing that person is. Do you think there's people that are speaking around the world like, hey man, and then, guess what? I did my responsibility, like my mom told me, and I threw out the garbage. Like how many people are actually gonna be like, oh, I wanna listen to that story of someone doing an everyday thing that everyone should be doing anyways? No one. People are looking for extremely successful people, and when you listen to their stories, they went through extreme things to have that extreme story for us to respect and to say how amazing they are. The thing I'm telling you guys is this, small experiences give you small experiences, right? Extreme experience gives you extreme experience. And the thing I wanna tell you guys is, you can't sit there like, this is, this is the mentality of people that we have to get rid of is, oh, I wanna work, I don't, I wanna work as the least amount I can and make tons of money. That doesn't make any sense. You have to work extremely to make extremely. That's what life's about, right? And in the same way we look at Hosea, look how extreme it was that he was able to realize the heart of God. Think about it. He can realize God's heart. Think of how extreme it has to be where you can realize God's heart. Okay, so I hope you guys uh, really enjoyed today's uh, Taco Tuesday, looking at the story of Jose, but you kind of kind of look at how extreme it is. Because it was so extreme, he was able to realize something extreme. And we have to, re and we have to recognize also the three different points is, number one is, don't just let experiences in life pass you by, but you need to realize about them. 
Because you'll realize something that will help everyone in life. You can help yourself in other areas of your life. The second thing is realize that love requires sacrifice. It really does. And sometimes it requires you to see the bigger picture first. And of course, the last one is uh, extreme experience gives extreme experience. While small experience gives small experience. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's Taco Tuesday and we learned a little bit more from Hosea. And for all of you there, for the first time, if you guys are on uh, Facebook, if it's your first time, make sure you click and like over there. But also, if you want to listen to all the other Taco Tuesdays, uh, we also have Bread Talks. As, uh, what's the other one called? Bubble Talks. There's another one. Lockdown Tuesdays. Uh, all these are different talks. We have them on our YouTube channel. It's called Espresso with Sky. We're going to send, put a link in there so you guys can uh, click to subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that whenever we go live, whenever we have new videos uploaded, you will be notified. And uh, for those of you who are on YouTube right now, go ahead and just click that subscribe and that notification bell also. Those of you who want to support our ministry, you guys can support us on Patreon. The link will be put up. And also, Saturday at 1 p.m., we will have group Bible lessons, right? Bible, study, Bible lessons, uh, more intimate, People from all over the world are actually joining it at the same time at 1 p.m. People from Mongolia, Hong Kong, Singapore, um, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, and Japan, everywhere, right? And you're going to meet tons of people from around the world. It's not going to be, it's not, it's not a huge group, and we have small groups also. So uh, a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of good feedback for that too. So if you just uh, sign up, put your email in there, we're going to send you all the links uh, every week. Hey, you know, we'll send you the links to the Zoom room, okay? So that means that this will be the end of today's Taco Tuesday. I hope you guys uh, had a wonderful time. And if anything, remember, put your questions in. We're going to take those questions. We're going to make a separate video. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you guys again next week. Bye-bye.